the drummer boy. I think that hell must be a little like a battlefield. After the rage and fury, the fighting is left in, and there's nothing left but the suffering moan of dying men that falls upon the deaf ears of the dead. The terrible scream when some poor beggar regains consciousness in a red world of agony. Yes, a battlefield is a hundredfold more terrible when the fighting is over. If you're a doctor, like I am, you have to pick your way through the human ruins lying in strange, twisted heaps. You choose the ones most likely to live. You harden yourself. Either that or you run away from it. I hardened. Clear down to the depths of my soul, I turned as hard as stone. I didn't feel love, hate, or even fear. I was rather proud of my reputation for steel nerves and no heart. I didn't believe in God or the devil. That's the way I was the day I met Charlie on the field at Gettysburg. I went out on the field where I'd seen the boy lying. He was lying beside his shattered drum. His left side was drenched in blood. There wasn't much use taking him in. It didn't take a doctor to see that. I knelt beside the boy. He was slight, fair-haired, couldn't have been more than 17. Then he lifted up his eyes and spoke. Can't, can't beat the charge, but my drum's broken, sir. That's all right, son. Save your strength. I am going to move you. You're, you're a doctor, aren't you? Yes, son, but this leg, I, I'm afraid you're going to lose it. Now, now, sir? No. I'm taking you back to the field hospital. I put your arms around my... No, no, doctor. You, you'll get all bloody. Do as I tell you quickly, son. We need all the time we can get. When we reached the field hospital, I had my chief nurse get ready for an amputation. However, due to a shortage of supplies, there was no more anesthetic left. I had all the field kits and supply rooms checked, but still none turned up. I went in to see the boy. Hello, son. Hello, doctor. Son, I have a real problem, and I'm going to put it to you straight. I'm going to have to take your leg off if I'm to save you from disease setting in, but... Well, son, you see, a requisition that I put in a long time ago hasn't come through, and there's no more anesthetic left. You, you mean you want to try it without any anesthetic? If you think you can take it, son. Yes, sir. I'm game. It'll be a good deal worse than anything you can imagine, son. Y yes, sir. But I have a friend who will stand by me. Amen. Oh, you're religious, aren't you, son? I believe in Jesus, if that's what you mean. Well, if religion can help you, believe anything you want to. Nurse, tell the orderlies to come and help hold the boy. No, no, doctor, you won't eat all those guys. I won't jerk. I, I promise, sir. That's a mighty big order, son. My, my Lord won't let me down. All right, for your sake. I hope your Lord is a good deal more powerful than I expect him to be. It took 15 minutes. As fast as I could work, it still took 15 minutes. He didn't make a move. He just kept repeating, Lord Jesus, stand by me now. Lord Jesus, stand by me now. That was the only sound that he made. I thought I was hard. I thought there weren't any feelings left within. When I finished the operation, I was drenched in sweat. I had a hard time keeping the instrument steady. When I finished up, I went through the other patients to try to get some sleep and left the chief nurse to finish up. I went home, but I couldn't sleep. That boy, repeating those words, Lord Jesus, stand by me now, kept gnawing at my brain. What was the matter with me? I had done other operations like that before. But it was as if that drummer boy had the answer to the hardness within. Finally, I did something I had never done before. I went back to the hospital without being called. He was awake when I stepped into the room. Hello, son. Hello, doctor. How you doing, son? I'm okay, sir. Thanks to you. I want to thank you so much, sir. 
That's all right, son. I, I was just doing my duty. I stopped by to see if, well, you know, if there's anything I could do for you. Yes, sir. If it's not much trouble, sir, I wonder if you wouldn't mind mailing the Bible that's under my pillow back to my mother. The address is on the inside. Well, of course I will, son, but aren't you going to want it? No, no, sir. I, I won't need it where I'm going. Well, that's foolish, lad. You're going to get well. No, no doctor. My, my Lord told me. He, he's taking, taking me home. Doctor. Yes, son. You, you, you don't, you don't know him, do you? You, you, you mean your Lord? Yes, sir. <clears throat> when you were cutting on my leg, I, I was praying. I was praying for you. Praying for me? No, I'm afraid it's a little late for that. Now, you'll have to quit talking and save your strength. I'm okay, doctor. I just, I just can't breathe so good. When, when you do accept my Lord, I, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very happy. Hundreds of soldiers died in my hospital during the war. I only followed one to the grave, Charlie Coulson Trevor Boy. I rode three miles to see him buried on a little rise overlooking the Battle of Gettysburg. It was lonely and windy, and for the first time in my life, I prayed. Lord, I'm not fit for it. But if it pleases you, cleanse my heart. Give me the strength that Charlie had. As Charlie prayed, Lord, save my soul. Mrs. Cogra, thank you so much for doing that.